What's up everyone? My name is Paul and today I'm installing a new radio and speakers in my RAV4. This is a longer video so I made a nice table of contents for you so you can jump to the part that you need. You can also click on the time links in the video description below. The audio system in my car is awful. I can only listen to the FM radio, which is mostly commercials, through the left rear speaker and once in a while the right front comes on for a couple seconds. I can't connect my phone to this radio and nobody uses CDs anymore. The cigarette lighter is disconnected so I can't charge my phone and there's a whole bunch of shit back here. It looks like a crossover and maybe an amplifier. I'm heading over to sonicelectronics.com to buy some car stereo. Start by entering your vehicle information and the website will tell you which speakers and radio will fit. The internet says the RAV4 has 6.5 inch speakers front and rear. This might be true for most RAV4s with power windows, but mine had smaller speakers. I want full range sound without buying a subwoofer, so I'll need a pair of 6x9s to provide enough bass. My new audio system is on the way from Sonic Electronics, so let's start taking the car apart, starting with the back panels. First, the back seats need to come out. There are four bolts holding the seats down. Use a 14mm socket to remove them. Now I can just pull the latch at the back of the seats and take them out. The floor panels by the front doors come out first, then the floor panel at the back door. I'm taking two Phillips screws out, then the seat belt takes a 14mm socket. There are three more screws by the back door, and another seat belt bolt. This one also takes a 14mm socket. Push in the push pin a few millimeters to unlock it, then pull it out. Open the tool tray and the lower panel is ready to come out. First pull it toward you, then slide it forward. Now it's out. There are three more trim clips. Be careful, they'll probably break anyway. You can buy some new trim clips from Toyota. Pry the front seat belt cover open, then use the 14 millimeter socket to take it off. Pull the panel toward you and it's ready to come out. What the hell is this wire doing here? I think this is part of the old stereo. It's not connected, so I'm taking it out. It looks like it goes to the front of the car. Let's cut it here. The tool tray has two Phillips head screws and a 10 millimeter bolt. Now I can get the extra wire out of here. The front kick panel needs an 11 millimeter socket, then just pull it straight back and remove it. The mysterious wire continues up into the dashboard. Let's get the glove box out of the way and pull the wire from above the airbag. It looks like it goes to the amplifier. Now I can take the speaker out. This is a Sirwin Vega 6 inch speaker. I have some nice Rockford Fosgate 6.5 inch speakers for the rear. Let's install them in this car. And the hole is too small. Thanks Toyota for screwing me on the speaker size. Luckily, Rockford Fosgate is a lot nicer than Toyota. The styrofoam packaging happens to also be a cutout template. I'm using a metal blade on my jigsaw to cut out the hole for a 6.5 inch speaker. I have a stone wheel to clean up the edges then a bit of coarse sandpaper. You could skip these steps, but when you cut your hand and there's blood everywhere, you'll wish you did this first. Now the hole is the right size, but the metal is uneven. I'm using an 80 mil sound deadening mat to give the speaker a flat surface to mount to. This stuff is soft and it's very easy to cut. I think two layers should be enough here. I'm poking through the square holes so I'll know where not to drill holes. The speaker fits this time. I'm using the drill to mark the holes, but I'm not drilling through yet. Now I can drill through the metal and I don't have to worry about damaging the speaker. The screws that came with the speakers are for wood and don't hold well in sheet metal. I'll use different screws. The RAV4 has these nice speaker connectors back here. I don't need an extra set of connections, so I'll just solder this connector directly to the speaker. The bigger terminal is positive and it goes to the black and red wire. Red is negative and goes to the smaller terminal. No, it doesn't make sense. I'm using heat shrink to cover up the connectors. Now I can install the speaker. The wiring just drops down inside the body. I'm using number 10 diameter sheet metal screws from Home Depot to hold the speakers. I'm protecting the speaker with my hand. If the screwdriver slips, I don't want to poke a hole in the foam surround. Now just plug it in. The right tool compartment has two Phillips head screws and a bolt that takes a 10 millimeter socket. I don't want the cone of the speaker to hit the speaker grill, so I'm taking a little material off to give me more room. Now the rear panel can snap into place. Place your one or two non-broken clips back in where you think they'll help the most. The lower panel hooks into the door frame first, then push it straight in. It has four screws holding it on. Close the tool compartment and don't forget to hook up the seat belts. With the rear speakers done, it's time to move on to the front door speakers. I'll start with the most annoying thing. I was able to hook the window crank clip 
with a small angled pick. I heard you can use a rag to pull the clip, but that didn't work for me. Put the clip back in the crank so you don't lose it. The door handle trim has a small black screw. This one is also easy to lose. The trim slides in at the front, so you have to pull it back a bit. I'm using a plastic pry bar so I don't scratch the trim. The front screw is different from all the others. Pop the mirror trim out at the top, then pull it up. The door handle has two large Phillips head screws. Grab them with a magnet now so you don't lose them on the floor. The lower screws are the same as the door handle screws. Pop the panel out using the plastic pry bar. There are push pins all along the bottom and front edges too. Then pull the door panel straight up by the handle. Check out this speaker grill. In this photo, you can see Toyota is making a fool of people who bought the RAV4. It looks like I have a 6.5 inch speaker, but no, it's much smaller than that. What the hell? Notice all these speakers are components. Someone paid extra and installed separate tweeters down by your feet where you can't hear them. More on that later. These are just 4 inch speakers. Useless. Okay, let's get the rest of this stuff apart. I bet I can get a 6.5 inch speaker mounting plate from the junkyard. Instead of finding the Toyota parts to mount 6.5 inch speakers up front, I'm doing things the hard way and making my own 6x9 inch speaker boxes. I'm not installing a subwoofer in my car, so I'll need the 6x9s to provide enough bass to make my music sound good. Let's start with this door panel. The backside has 9 Phillips head screws holding the storage and speaker grill plastic. One more screw and the speaker grill comes off. I'm tracing the outline of the speaker cover. Let's see if it can hold a 6x9. I'll make it slightly bigger and leave the width of a Sharpie around the speaker grill. I'm drawing a bunch of lines to help me put the template in the right place. This is the styrofoam packing from the speakers. Thank you Rockford Fosgate for making this easy. I'm drilling a hole so I can start the jigsaw. Now I'm cutting out the speaker hole. The circular saw is more scary, but it's good for straight lines. Okay, now I have my speaker box version 1. I want the outside to be bigger and the inside to be smaller, so tracing it and making a copy will do exactly that. I used the belt sander to even out the edges, and the stone bit can help round out the inside. Let's see if this new piece will fit the door panel. It matches up with the storage compartment, and the speaker fits the hole. This will be my template. I made 8 more toilet seats out of this half inch thick MDF. The right side is the same as the left, just flip it. I used wood glue and six construction screws to hold these together. These two places line up with flat sheet metal on the door. I'm marking the speaker box for some heavy duty mounting screws. I'm using a drill press so I can drill straight through the speaker box. Then I'll drill a little over halfway through to make room for the sheet metal screw. The belt sander works well to even out the edges, but I don't have a way to hold it flat. I can mark the high spots using a square, then only sand the marks to make the side flat. I did this with the stone too, but the inside really isn't important. I'm rounding the edges using a jiggle sander, then the final sanding is done by hand with 120 grit sandpaper. This is Rust-Oleum Filler Primer. It's thick, like those Tinder chicks with Snapchat filters in every photo. I found some spray paint that says it's dark gray. The brush will add texture to hopefully make this look more like the door panel plastic. The dark gray looks a lot more like light gray and doesn't match. I don't want to spend more time on painting, so I'll leave it for now. I'm marking some mounting holes on the speaker box, then drilling and running the screws all the way in to make threads. The first two screws will hold the speaker box so I can accurately drill the second two holes. Let's install the door panel, but only with the lower two screws. I'm using the drill to mark three holes on the door. With the door panel off, I can drill the holes without damaging my way too light gray and not matching paint. I also use the screws to start some new threads. This will make installation easier. Now I can install the door panel for the last time. Two big screws down low and two more in the door handle. The weird one with the washer and the cover goes up front and remember to clip in the front part of the door handle trim. Pro tip, install the door crank handle handle without a clip first. Make sure the window is up and you like where the handle points, then install it with the clip. I used three big sheet metal screws in the speaker boxes and now I can install those new 6x9 inch speakers. The RAV4 already has these nice speaker connectors so I don't need to add spade terminals. The white wire is positive which goes to the bigger terminal. I'm soldering these directly to the speaker. Black is negative. Heat shrink is a great way to insulate the connection and make it look good. You have to install it before you solder. Now the speaker just plugs in.
Add the speaker grill and use the four screws that came with the speaker. It takes a 3mm Allen key, but they give you the bit with the speakers. That box fits really well. The color is off, but I think it's good enough for now. With all the speakers done, it's time to see what kind of nightmare is hiding out behind the dashboard. Let's get this old radio out of here. First, take out the two Phillips head screws under the radio trim. Remove the faceplate, then pull the trim down to take it out. The radio has four machine screws holding it on. You can use a Phillips screwdriver or an 8mm socket. I'm pulling on the radio, but it won't come out. Damn. Let's take this piece out and start unplugging stuff from the radio. That's the back. This one is basic. I have some RCA cables and a big rat's nest of wires. Here are some shitty homemade crossovers. I see wire nuts in there too. That's hilarious. Unplug the adapters from the wiring harness and... I found more crossovers. These two connectors and antenna are the only things that belong in here. I'm chasing weird stuff so let's take this lower panel off. The metal part has three bolts. You can unclip the fuse block from the lower panel. The hood release cable is also easy to disconnect. Wow, someone took house wire and stuck it into the back of the fuse block. So good. Let's see where it goes. I'll need the center console off to find all the treasure. Unscrew the shift knob, then take out five screws. Pull the center console up and to the back of the car. This may be the methiest stereo I've ever seen. This super cheap crossover and amp were crammed in here, mounted with eight machine screws at a weird angle with a ton of wires going everywhere. Oh, and they cut holes in the dash to put tweeters by your feet. Someone put a lot of work and not much thought into this stereo, like they were high on meth. This stuff didn't even work. Don't do drugs, guys. They're really bad for you. These kick panels had tweeters installed in them. I got some panels from the junkyard, minus the holes. There's another set of tweeters here, strategically placed where you can't hear them. Unfortunately, they cut holes into the main dashboard. That's hard to fix. And this is the shit pile of stereo stuff I took out of my car. That was actually pretty fun. Now let's move on to wiring and installing the new head unit, or radio, or multimedia receiver, or whatever you want to call it. I'm cutting the wiring harness open so you can see all the wires. I have the wiring adapters. Connecting these adapters to your new radio is the easiest way to wire your stereo. This is the radio wiring diagram. The radio gets power from the cigarette lighter circuit when the key is on, and the main power comes from the underhood fuse labeled dome. I recommend taking this fuse out so you don't get a short circuit while connecting the radio wiring. I recommend using the harness adapters, but I'm going to show you how to wire the radio if you don't have them. Let's start by cutting the battery, accessory, and ground wires. Yellow is battery power. It's always on and connects to the light blue and yellow wire. Black is ground. Connect it to the brown wire. Red is accessory. It's on when the engine is running and when the key is in the accessory position. Connect it to the gray wire. The left front speaker has green wires. The striped wire is negative and goes to yellow. The solid green wire connects to black. The right rear speaker has purple wires. Purple with a stripe goes to white and solid goes to red. The right front speaker has gray wires. Gray with a stripe goes to blue and solid goes to light green. The left front speaker has white wires. White with a stripe goes to violet or dark purple color, and the solid white wire connects to the pink wire. The two extra wires are illumination, positive and negative. This radio doesn't need a light wire. I don't need the mute wire on the radio, and my RAV4 doesn't have steering wheel buttons. I might use the antenna control wire for an amplifier later, so I'll leave it out. It's time to move the installation brackets over to the new radio. Thank you Toyota for making your radio brackets simple and awesome. Just take two screws out per side and the brackets fit the new radio perfectly. I'm using M4 metric machine screws to bolt the brackets onto the new radio. I don't understand Bluetooth microphone brackets, so I'm attacking mine with power tools. This screw will hold it in place. Clip the microphone in place and tuck the wire into the headliner. I'm just taping the Bluetooth microphone wire to the A pillar and installing the trim. I used to hide aftermarket wiring, but these days I think it's better to make it easy to find and label it. 
Now just plug in the radio power, Bluetooth microphone, and radio antenna. The radio easily fits back into the dash. Tighten the four screws with a Phillips screwdriver or 8mm socket. Take the faceplate off, then install the radio trim. It hooks in up top, then takes two Phillips head screws. Put the faceplate back on. Everything is installed, so let's go through some settings. I'll connect my phone and adjust the crossovers to get the best sound quality from the speakers. I put my microphone outside my car because I don't want it to go into clipping before the speakers do. I don't have a fancy stereo microphone, but you should still be able to hear the difference when I adjust the radio settings. I recommend wearing headphones for this part of the video. First, select Bluetooth as the source on the radio. Select KMM-BT on the phone. Now I'm connected. Let's play some copyright free music from YouTube. Plugging in will give you better sound quality and charge your phone at the same time. I'm going to stop talking now so you can hear the radio adjustments. You can also set the display color. I'm making the display green and setting the buttons to sky blue. That's so cool. That sounds really good. I can't believe I waited two years to install a working radio on my car. Well, that was a lot of work, but with this old turd, it's always like that. I did learn that RAV4s come with different speaker sizes. If you look online, it'll say that you have 6.5 inch speakers front and rear, which is true if you have the automatic transmission with power windows. However, my RAV4 came with 4 inch speakers in the front and 6 inch speakers in the rear. So if you're replacing your stereo, definitely pull those panels off and see what speaker size you have before ordering parts. That's all I have for now, and you'll see me in the next video.